Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, back again. This time around, it's uh, something that was very unusual to me. I don't normally participate in estate sales. Uh, first, there's not many of them in the area, but secondly, they're usually professionally run, uh, and they ask top dollar for most items. It's not, uh, uh, not very much to do there in terms of haggling and the like. And um, at any rate, I was uh, driving around uh, town, saw a sign for an estate sale and had nothing better to do so I decided I would get out and uh, it wasn't a professionally run one it was uh, I guess the heirs or whatever it was and uh, the house was in pretty much disrepair and uh, you know so I did what I normally do I asked do you have any fishing equipment and they said we do in the back shed but be careful because it's collapsing well that sounds like an opportunity to me, and I, uh, I kind of did my version of American Pickers. I went in there and uh, found some old uh, old reels and pretty much in disrepair, but I think we can give them all a second chance, and that's kind of what this story is all about, and the ones that will be previewed for the videos. Uh, so before I get started, I want to thank the first responders and everybody who's in the forefront, the front line of fighting this pandemic. EMTs, first responders, fire, law enforcement, medical, nursing home staff, teachers, uh, essential personnel, everybody that's helping us get through this, thank you very much. So uh, I found about eight or nine reels and I would call it reasonable in terms of the price I paid. And uh, let's get started on that. So the first one up is kind of one of my favorites. It's a reel It's hard to beat and we'll just see how much this was beat. Uh, this is the BG90. It's a Daiwa reel. It's the biggest one in the series. This one tends to always have, in my experience, have a wobble in the rotor. I don't know why, but uh, we're going to find out. This one seems very solid, so I said it seems like it wouldn't be fished. Here's the example of what happens when you leave something in a shed with a bad roof. Uh, it's kind of laying around. Uh, the handle is very hard to turn. We'll see if we can free that up with some uh, WD-40 or something. And if we can get that handle going, this is going to be a good project reel. I always like the, uh, the BG reels. Next up then, there was a Jigmaster. And again, you can see it hasn't been taken care of. From what I understand, the estate fell into the, uh, disrepair. The, the fellow that owned it had passed away quite a few years ago. It was in the family. But I guess other than having somebody possibly be a tenant there, nothing much was going on with it. Certainly nobody was uh, looking or paying much attention to it. So uh, we have a Jigmaster. These are always good. The, uh, the Burgundy sided ones uh, tend to be more sought after. They're made in the U.S. And uh, let's see what we can do with that. Here's everybody's reel. This is a Silstar. It's the FT35. It's a graphite reel. This is an interesting one. It's a top drag but has the profile and everything of a rear drag fishing reel. Uh, these are on the value side of the equation, but this one's working. Credit to Silster. And uh, we'll see. Oh, it's not tripping the bale, but you can just see by the dirt and everything how the water intrusion in the shed kind of came about. Next up, I think I'll do this. This is the Sea Lake, I think. Yeah, this is the Sea Lake 930. It's an Ocean City. I'm going to be doing a... Um, profile of the Ocean City Manufacturing Company shortly, so I'll probably feature that and I'll probably take that one apart as well. Next up is uh, kind of one that uh, is also everybody's reel. It's a Cardinal 752. This one's kind of jammed up with line. Uh, this is the traditional rear drag and uh, this one doesn't have a bail working, so I'm going to have to get underneath that see what's going on there. Probably a parts reel. Next up then is another one of these wonderful reels. It's the Daiwa Gold Series. It's the Gold Series 20. And this is another one of these cases where you try and figure out how manufacturers named sizes of reels. Because this 20 is a 50 size reel by today's standards. And uh, this one, look at that. Sitting in a shed at least five years. Dirt encrusted, rained on and working. Go figure. Well, there's a pair of them. So here's the other one. This is the GS30. Slightly bigger. Missing the little uh, bezel sheet here, rocky rotor, nothing that can't be fixed. And we'll, uh, of course, this one has a broken screw there, so we'll have to find something maybe we can do, or maybe we just leave it. Next one is my personal favorite. I saw this one early on, and I want to do a video on this one. 
This is the uh, dam. It's the SLS Zero. It's uh, made in Germany. This one's got a wobbly thing, but I don't know if that's just simply tightening down the, the bail nut there. But this is a, uh, a light fresh water and uh, a sticky bail and uh, good appearance. Now I forget the, the way that the saying goes on these. All quicks are damn, but not all dams are quick. I don't remember exactly the manufacturing priority and sequence to those, but uh, regardless, uh, this one will make it to video because of the sticking bail. The loose cap, we'll go figure out what's going on in that. And uh, because I want to take it fishing. <laughs> so uh, we, will, uh, we will tune that one up and make sure that we, uh, we do that right. And then the last one for the, uh, the deal was a Penn Center to 3 -0. It's the 112H. It's a nice reel all around. And again, I guess to, to me, just the ability for these things to sit unattended for years, rained on, leaky roofs, dirt encrusted, and uh, still just sitting there ready to uh, say, put some line on me, take me fishing. Uh, it's quite a, quite a tribute to the manufacturing. So I wanted to introduce you to that because there's the opportunity when you do uh, flea markets or garage sales or things of the like. So the lessons learned here, if you are going to a, a tag sale, a yard sale, flea market, or in this case, estate sales, don't ignore the obvious. And the obvious is... Uh, you don't see fishing or maybe you see one or two little pieces around, don't forget to ask the question, is there anything else that you might have that's fishing related? And, uh, and it's interesting because that's how this conversation started about the shed. They said, I think there's a tackle box in the back shed. Well, of course, uh, the fellow who passed on was uh, up in years. And I thought, well, maybe I'd find some vintage lures or who knows what you'll find. But out of respect for them, I guess I just decided I'll go in the back shed. And when I came upon uh, these, it was like uh, a whole different uh, conversation. And they were pleasantly surprised when uh, when I brought them out. They didn't realize they were there. And more importantly, they were happy with the offer that I made to them uh, so that I could acquire these and acquire some projects. So let's just go quickly on which ones we'll do. We'll do that silster because of that uh, bail issue and because it's a popular reel, particularly in Europe. We're certainly going to do the BG90 uh, because I want to get that one fishing again. And uh, I think this is just uh, some old stuff that, there, that is on there, but I think that will come off. I probably will do one or the other of the gold series, the uh, 20 or the 30. I don't think I need to do both of them. As I mentioned, it's pretty much the same size, and if you look at the cases, they're pretty much the same. So that'd be a 50 size. This would be the 60 size of the fishing reel. Um, this one I gotta find a cover for somehow. I'll show you how to fashion one maybe. Uh, but again, that stud is broken there, so I'm not sure how much I wanna tamper with that and how much I just wanna leave that one alone and uh, just kinda take the risk that the spring may pop out. We're certainly going to do the dam SLS Zero because I want to take that one fishing. I haven't uh, been exposed to this one. Also, it's got a st sticking bail, so uh, we'll see what we can do to make that work. And obviously something's going on in here, but I think it's just a, a down-tightened one. I've done the Senator 3.0 high speeds before. If somebody wants to see that, let me know. I'll be happy to, to do a video on that one, but I do have that one in my library. I started my series all these years ago with the Jigmaster. I was repairing an awful lot of jig masters for uh, fishing boats here in the Northeast. And I just simply wanted to show everybody how to do that. Uh, I think it's been a while probably since I've done one. I think the quality of my videos probably has improved a little bit. So if you're interested in seeing another jig master, let me know in the comments section. Again, look forward to this one. Uh, this one is going to be part of that series on Ocean City as a manufacturer. I think you'll find that one interesting. I'm going to do that one in a couple of weeks, much like I just did the one uh, on Perez. So uh, you can, you will see this one come up. And then this last one, I think uh, we got to figure out a couple of things, whether it's even worth repairing. I have a bale with no spring. I'm loaded up with um, fishing line here. I, 
I think that handle's probably secure enough, but uh, it certainly doesn't look anything like its little brother over here that's in pretty good condition. So we will uh, we'll see on this one. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please like it. If you want to see these projects and more, please subscribe. You won't miss any of them. And, and as I mentioned a while ago, I'm trying to post these on a daily basis, just uh, kind of as a uh, homage to the emergency workers and frontline personnel, trying to kind of do what they do, get up every morning and uh, try and make a, uh, a difference in the day. Uh, so if you want to see these all, subscribe. And finally, if you have a reel that you would like serviced, I do service reels by mail. And if you contact me on the business, by email on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with the repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.